everybody. Oh, I'm looking at myself. Hi, everybody. <laughs> that was odd. Anyway, hi. Um, I am going to do a video today on Olivia from Twelfth Night and specifically her Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. That one. Um, this one's not too hard, so hopefully this will actually be a short video, even though I always say that and it never is. Uh, let's try and make it fairly short. So as per usual, going into some of the meanings of what she's talking about and a little bit of insight into how you might play it. A little bit of context for this one. This is an interesting one character-wise. Uh, so... It is fairly straightforward language. Now, remember, whenever you've got an O, it's not, oh, what a deal of scorn. It's, oh, oh, all that kind of stuff. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. So um, in this context, so you really got to know the context for this because she's reacting to, um, what's her face? Um, Viola doing a like getting annoyed at her basically so contempt and anger so oh, she's like oh he looks hot when he's angry or she because it's actually a girl spoiler alert a murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid love's night is noon so um and she's just doing a comparison there a murderous guilt will would show up um as quickly oh sorry rather the other way around but, so that love that kind of wants to hide itself is gonna pop up as quickly as murderous guilt. So if someone, <laughs> if you are in love with someone um, and you're trying to hide it, it's gonna be as obvious as if you've killed someone and you're also trying to hide it. Great comparison there, Olivia. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Uh, love's night is noon. So basically like, you can't hide love. It's like the middle of the day, the sun is out and about, you can't hide, it's not nighttime. Uh, Cesario, so this bit, I would say that probably, it's an interesting one because you could probably play the first bit a bit to yourself or to the audience um, and then switch it back into Cesario. I think that that's a clear impetus to go back to Cesario and be like, oh, let me profess my love. So she's fallen in love like super quickly from being annoyed at this dude to suddenly being like, oh, oh, interesting. Hmm. Um, and she, I think this really reveals about her that she is secretly kind of a romantic and she strikes me as the kind of lady that would be reading a lot of like Mills and Boone kind of <laughs> romantic books like, oh, but, but actually she's supposed to be in mourning for her brother and she's putting on this show, she's walking around in black and being all serious. She to me is a very soap operatic kind of character. I think in her own mind she is that she's actually playing all of the, at all these things. She's playing at mourning. She's playing at love. She's kind of not a very genuine person until maybe later on. Maybe you could argue that later on when she meets Sebastian that she is genuinely in love. She's kind of gets swept off her feet and she seems quite, quite naive. I think quite sheltered and just just going along with things and being dramatic about it. I think she's just secretly a really dramatic person. Um, melodramatic person. Like, keep it down, Olivia. So, Cesario by the Roses of the Spring. So, Roses of the Spring. Like, it, this is not a Shakespearean thing where it's like, oh, he's trying to do this amazing poetry about roses. No, this is Olivia doing shit poetry by the Roses of the Spring. Like, I swear by the moon like she's just rubbish she's it's just her pulling stuff out of it but cesario by the roses of the spring by maidhood honor truth and everything now so that you mean if you wanted to you could play it that she's like oh what can i swear by and give her that thinking process that you could play that um by maidhood but be aware that can also slow down your flow so you could also play that she's actually kind of got those things ready to go because she's been watching a lot of days of our lives so not that you have to play it like a modern day kind of thing but you know just the Shakespearean equivalent of days of our lives um, by maidhood honor truth and everything I love thee so yeah just met you so I'm definitely in love with you I love thee so that maugre all thy pride so maugre just means kind of like 
forget about it. Like, don't worry about like stuff your pride. More over all thy pride, nor wit, nor reason can my passion hide. So, uh, despite the fact that you might be a bit embarrassed by this or that you're actually a really proud person, clearly, uh, I can't even deal with how I feel right now, so I have to tell you all about it. She's very subtle, as you can see. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo, thou therefore hast no cause. So that all goes together, by the way. And notice that she's kind of going into these um, rhyming couplets pretty quickly, because she's, again, playing on, how can I sound romantic? Even though it's, I've just met this person. Um, so sorry, do not extort thy reasons from this clause that for that I woo, thou therefore hast no cause. So what she's saying is, don't um, take from what I'm saying um, that because I'm approaching you, that I'm kind of hitting on you, that you don't have any need to like woo me and, and kind of win me over because actually um, I am kind of, uh, like you do need to win me over. I am actually not that easy, mm, okay. Um, or basically like, don't be overwhelmed my life, like my love for you and my overdoing this. So please don't take this the wrong way. Let's all, let's go in this together. And then, but rather reason thus with reason fetter. So reason with this other reason. Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. No, it's not. No, it isn't really. So she's saying, um, it's great when people love you and they you can love them back, but actually um, just giving someone your love without them asking is even better. Sure. So just to sum up, because I've got to run away because I can hear my toddler crying. You can probably hear him too. Um, it, she is a very melodramatic lady. And so you can actually just go over the top with that and really play that like uh, days of our lives thing. She's going, she's really going for it. Don't hold back. She's just switching into that crazy, that crazy time stuff. She's decided to drop the pretense of being in mourning. Um, so just in terms of the technique, just be aware of the rhyming that it might be a little bit full on, um, but you can really go into it because she's doing over, she's over the top. Um, and that's all from now. And I'll probably do another Olivia one later. Thanks guys. Bye.